Many urban planners, myself included, have talked time and time again about the importance of building new transit infrastructure. Constructing and improving infrastructure brings jobs, economic growth, and access to more opportunities for those living around it. Building new transit can bring a much-needed boost to disadvantaged communities cut off from the rest of their cities. It can also be used to alleviate already congested routes on previously built transit. So, if building new transit infrastructure and transit lines is such a good thing, why aren't more agencies doing it? Well, the main reason is the cost. Building transit infrastructure in the modern United States costs way more than it does in the rest of the developed world. The cost of planning and construction is massively inflated, leaving agencies to limit the amount of improvements and expansions that they can perform on their systems. I'm going to take a look at the two largest metros in the United States, both the MTA and CTA, to see both of the agency's core construction projects. While the MTA, and therefore its project, is much bigger, both of these projects show just how flawed infrastructure construction in the United States really is. Let's start in Chicago. The CTA hosts the second busiest rapid transit system in the United States. Nicknamed the L, the system is famous for its multiple elevated tracks that run above Chicago's busiest hub, the Loop. The system has eight total rail lines which are all named by color. Its busiest line is the red line, which runs from the northern edge of the city at Howard, down south through the dense north side, and then runs underground through the loop, where then it runs south along the median of 9094 until reaching its terminus at 95th Street. Being the only train connecting the city's north and south sides, the CTA wanted to improve the line by cutting travel times and improving stations. They named this decades-long plan the Red Ahead, which hosts three major sub-projects. The first is the Red Purple Modernization Project, which consists of rebuilding and realigning the 100-year-old track from Howard to Belmont. This project is currently under construction, with multiple sections of track being rebuilt and stations closed for upgrading. Their second project is the now-completed Red Line South Reconstruction Project, which improved trackage and upgraded stations, making all of them handicap accessible. The third and final project is our focus, the Red Line Extension. For decades, this project has been proposed to connect the far south side of Chicago to the Red Line. The neighborhoods of Roseland and Pullman are both a transit dead zone with no convenient access to the rest of Chicago and therefore its services. The extension plans to solve this by extending the Red Line south through these neighborhoods. The current plan is to build an elevated track from 95th Street along I-57 before cutting south to run along Union Pacific's track. There will be four new stations, including 103rd, 111th, Michigan Avenue, and a new terminus at 130th. The plan also includes a new train yard, which the CTA says will improve frequency across the entire line. So, sounds like a great plan. The track alignment won't be too difficult, and it will be beneficial for those living in the lower income communities. Too bad it's taken 20 years to even start its construction. Yeah, 20 years. The process started in 2006 and still hasn't even started to be built yet. And even when construction does eventually start, the CTA says it won't be until 2029 when the extension is open to service. But it gets even worse. The price tag for this project is currently estimated to be $3.6 billion. You heard that right, $3.6 billion for four new stations and a rail yard. This may seem way over the top for a relatively simple extension like this, but most projects constructed in the United States take decades to plan and billions of dollars to construct. And the Red Line extension is even the worst perpetrator being built. There's a much bigger and much more expensive project being constructed right now. Ah, New York. The Big Apple. The city. It's America's largest city and hosts its most extensive transit network. It's right along America's only high-speed rail corridor, it's a terminus to multiple rail lines, and it's the home of the MTA, one of the largest transit agencies in the world. It receives an annual 1.7 billion passengers a year, more than the rest of the United States' metros combined. Oh, and add the London Tube to that too. And yep, it still wins. MTA's system has 26 lines, and for over 50 years, the agency has been trying to add a 27th. The Second Avenue Subway is a project currently under construction in New York. It plans to construct a new subway line down eastern Manhattan, all the way from Harlem to Wall Street. This project is split into four separate phases. The first phase was completed in 2017, adding stations from 72nd Street to 96th Street. The second phase currently under construction will continue northwards from the first phase, constructing stations at 106th, 116th, and 125th Streets. Phase 3 will then continue down south along 2nd Avenue from 72nd Street to Houston Street. Will phase forward then bring the line to its terminus at Hanover Square. Currently, the Q line serves the northern portion of the project along with limited runs from the N and R lines during rush hour. In the future, once phases 3 and 4 are completed, 
a new line, the T, will run across the entirety of 2nd Avenue. A subway along 2nd Avenue has been proposed since the original 2nd Avenue elevated rail was demolished in 1942. And funnily enough, the elevated rail was actually demolished in anticipation that the 2nd Avenue subway would be completed. However, the newly formed MTA had budget shortfalls that led to the project being scrapped. It wasn't until 20 years later when the project would once again be proposed. And after New York voted on a budget, the construction of the subway began in 1972. However, this wouldn't last long, as the city would face an economic crisis. This crisis, along with a huge exodus of people out of the city, led the New York subway system to see a 40% reduction in passengers, crippling the agency's finances. The construction saw its completion date move from 1980 to 2000, and then back again to 1988. It wasn't looking good for the project. With wavering finances and lowered public support due to being seen as the rich man's subway, the project's future was in jeopardy. And in 1974, the mayor of New York planned a budget that would reallocate $5.1 billion from the 2nd Avenue subway to other projects in Queens. This effectively slowed construction to a snail's pace, and a year later, construction was halted indefinitely. With the newly constructed tunnels being sealed shut, it was safe to say that the project was dead in the water, being a small reminder of the ambitious plan. In the early 2000s, however, New York's economy was fully recovered, and once again, the 2nd Avenue subway plan was considered. And after some votes and funding, the project was started with a ribbon cutting in the old tunnels in 2007. Complications with construction led the completion date to be pushed back. The construction also cost more than what was originally proposed in the budget. But after years of complications, the first phase of the project was completed in 2017, only costing a measly $5 billion. Okay, so maybe breaking the record for the costliest subway tunnel in the world at the time wasn't a great look. But look no farther, the MTA got his act together and won't make the same mistake again. Phase 2 will be better. Oh, wait, never mind, it's gonna get worse. The cost for Phase 2 is estimated to be around 6 to $7 billion for the same amount of stations as the first phase. There is obviously a huge problem here. Why is New York building a subway at seven times the average cost compared to the rest of the world? And why is an elevated structure over an existing right-of-way in Chicago cost $3.6 billion? The Second Avenue subway in New York and the Red Line extension in Chicago are both similar in a way. They are both new metro projects which have taken decades to plan and will cost billions of dollars to construct. Despite being different projects with different circumstances, the main issues stay the same. Let's take a look at the reasons for these outrageous costs in America's largest transit agencies. The designs of stations in most metro systems in the United States are far too large and complex. The 96th Street station on the 2nd Avenue subway is over double the length of the actual train platform, much larger than the global average. Many rebuilt stations in New York are far too large for the purpose that they serve. Similarly, the Red Line extension in Chicago seems to have the same problem. The stations on this line seem much too intricate for a simple stop. I'm all for designing a nice and modern station, but there's a point where you need to consider cutting back on the design to save money. You can still have a nice looking station while also keeping it simple and effective in its main purpose, transporting people. A reason I believe these stations are overbuilt is for their presentation. When people hear their tax money is going to a project, they'd much rather see a large and luxurious station than a small and simple one. I think these agencies want to keep their expectations high, so they add unnecessary and expensive additions to their stations. Take Grand Central Madison, for example. Sure, it looks gorgeous, but I'm not sure it looks gorgeous enough to justify its $11 billion price tag. Another often overlooked reason for these large stations is a space given to storage and maintenance rooms. Maintenance rooms in American metros are far larger than their European or Asian counterparts, where many of their stations don't even have their own areas for maintenance. The cost of these large stations more than doubled the cost of the 2nd Avenue subway project as a whole. There's also a problem with different parties fighting over these storage and maintenance rooms. On the 2nd Avenue subway, it is reported that each team working for the MTA wanted their own space, whether it was hydraulics, track maintenance, or janitorial employees. These groups fought to have their own spaces since they're the ones responsible for the maintenance of their own equipment. They don't want to maintain the other team's equipment, so they argue to have their equipment separated from the others. This is why extra storage rooms are often added to metro stations. And speaking of different groups fighting each other, let's look at arguably the main reason for the massive cost of these construction projects, contractors. As stated on MTA's website, the planning of Phase 1 ended when it awarded its 10th and final contract, 
10 separate contractors for two miles of track seems like a lot, and that's because it is. Transit agencies here in America tend to outsource most of their labor to private contractors, which jacks up the price of planning and construction. In the past, it wasn't uncommon to see most transit projects being planned and managed by the agencies themselves, and that's exactly what happens in the rest of the world. But in the land of the US of A, most of the planning and oversight of large construction projects are done by other companies, which, by the way, don't do a very good job. For the first phase of the subway in New York, the MTA had a whopping 124 employees working on the project. Again, there were only 124 people to oversee and plan the billion dollar project. There were reports that the construction site was often overstaffed due to the contractors, with many of the workers sitting around because there's simply nothing to do. Contractors don't need to do a good job with overseeing a project. Besides, if it takes longer to build, the more money they make. And I mean, some of these contracts are just ridiculous. For example, the stations use two escalator contractors. There's no reason why two separate companies need to be hired to put in a goddamn escalator. These ridiculous costs are a joke compared to other countries' construction projects. For example, Barcelona is building a completely new subway line in their city. The 24 station line will cost them around 6.7 billion euros or around 7.3 billion US dollars. Can you see the difference? It took New York, the largest city and the largest economy on the planet, $5 billion to build just three stations, while it took Spain to build 24 stations, only $2 billion more than that. And Paris is building what they call the Grand Paris Express, a massive project building four new lines and extending two with a total of 68 new stations on their metro. Now, how much does this project cost? $100 billion? $300 billion? Well, it's around 32 billion. And that's after the project went over budget. People in France were angry with the 32 billion dollar project building four completely new metro lines. For reference, 32 billion is around the same estimated cost that the completed 2nd Avenue subway will have. France can build more than quadruple the amount of infrastructure than the United States at the same exact price. Could you imagine what American cities would look like if we can build transit projects at the same cost as our European counterparts? It goes to show you just how inefficient we have become in building modern transit infrastructure. If transit agencies hired more employees to oversee their projects, then they could cut back on the number of contractors needed to be hired. Using more in-house labor and simplifying the designs of stations will dramatically decrease the costs and time spent on these important transit projects. Having more money also means more could be spent on other projects in the agency, like improving infrastructure and increasing frequency, which we've seen from my previous videos, link in the description by the way, would boost the ridership, which in turn will give a monetary boost to these transit networks. We can use these efforts to cut back on spending and improve transit in the United States as a whole. If cities like Paris can build four new lines for $30 billion, then I'm sure as hell New York can build a new line for less than that. Let's make transit affordable to build again, so we don't have to waste billions of dollars to construct clean and rapid transit. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you all next time.